While some say the bigger the better, more people forget just how hard it is to control something huge. Take these ships, for instance. From a bunch of broken bridges to damaged docks and more, here are the 20 biggest ship collisions and mistakes caught on camera. A bridge too far. It's not every day that you get to go on a cruising joyride, but when you do get the opportunity, chances are that you expect to max out your relaxation time. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for the luxury liner Pearl No. 7, when her maiden voyage didn't quite go according to plan. Captain Guo Lai, who was at the helm of the ship, may have let the pressure get to him when he forgot to account for a few major factors out on the sea, like the rising tide for starters, as well as the fact that the ship was sitting high on the water, with no passengers or cargo on board yet to keep it down. As the ship passed underneath a suspension bridge in eastern China, the captain couldn't redirect it in time and chopped the top of the ship clean off. Whoops! Meanwhile, on the bridge above, a crowd had gathered to wave off the ship and wish her well on her journey. At least that was the plan. As the ship approached, the crowd started waving frantically, trying to alert the crew to the impending disaster. If only the captain could see it from their angle. But the crew misinterpreted the waves as a friendly greeting and stayed their course. The ship hit the bridge with an enormous crash, causing two chimneys to be lopped off with major damage to the bridge. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but the Pearl No. 7 only took a bit of damage, all things considered. We can only imagine the embarrassment that captain must be feeling after this mishap, but at least he's got a good story to tell at the next captain's meeting, Cargo Carnival of Chaos. In a classic case of Oops, We Collided, a maritime mishap between a Cypriot cargo ship and a Tunisian freighter can be considered a case study of human errors. It just seems like nothing went right as these two major movers of mass stuck to a collision course, each with their fair share of blunders to take responsibility for. During the joint investigation involving experts from Cyprus, Tunisia, and France, it was revealed that the watch officers on both vessels were engaged in some less than savvy behavior. They should have known better, right? One officer was caught red-handed, but not empty-handed as he was gabbing away on his phone, completely oblivious to the avoidable threat. Meanwhile, his counterpart on the other ship decided to play a little game of ignore the radar alarms. Definitely not a great call for a captain on the high seas. But the blame game doesn't stop there. Tunisia's top sea transport official added to the finger pointing by mentioning that the phone addicted captain was quite literally off the radar. Does anyone screen these guys? And when things were already plenty bad, we can't forget the Cypriot crew who apparently thought it was the right time to throw anchor in a lane meant for merchant ships. While the investigation continues over whose fault it was, French experts are busy calculating the environmental impact and the cost of tidying up the coastal waters. It turns out this mishap comes with a hefty price tag, as both ships were insured by the same company. That is one awkward claims processing cruise ship crash. Speaking of carnivals, these carnival cruisers are a great getaway if you love shows on the ocean. Unfortunately for these parties, they had the misfortune of being part of the shows and not in a good way. According to the company, two Carnival cruise ships had an unexpected encounter at the port of Cozumel, Mexico, resulting in damage to at least one ship and causing a total of six reported injuries. The incident occurred when the Carnival Glory, in the process of docking, made contact with the already anchored Carnival Legend. Fortunately, the company assured that both ships still remained seaworthy despite the mishap. Initially, one minor injury was reported when a Carnival Glory guest was being evacuated from the dining room. After further evaluation, six guests had presented themselves to the Carnival Glory Medical Center for assessment. Witness Makina Morris, a passenger from Salt Lake City, Utah, described the chaotic scene on the fourth deck of the Carnival Legend as the Carnival Glory approached. She heard passengers screaming and witnessed sounds of cracking and glass breaking, leading to the impact. Due to the incident, the passengers of both ships have been advised to spend their day ashore in the same city. 
It's worth noting that eight ships from various cruise lines were scheduled to dock at the port of Cozumel on the same day, with the Carnival Glory and Carnival Legend having their specific docking times. But hey, the collision could have been much worse. Head-on collision Speaking of being worse, this twisting turn of events involved two ships that had an epic collision in Ontario's Welland Canal. It was like a dance of disasters as the vessels, aptly named Alanis and Florence Spirit, found themselves heading towards each other on the same side of the canal. Does that make it a traffic jam in the water? Captured on video and shared across social media, the suspenseful footage revealed the slow and nerve-wracking advance of the cargo vessels. Tension filled the air as Alanis and Florence Spirit inched closer and closer, leading to a momentous crash that would make even Michael Bay proud. As the dust settled on this aquatic showdown, the SLSMC's Operations Control Center sprang into action, swiftly directing both ships to the wharfs for inspection. It was like a marine crime scene, with officials from Transport Canada, the transportation safety boat, and the dedicated marine officers descending upon the location to investigate the breakdown. When the collision unfolded, the Florence Spirit was on a daring coal delivery mission bound for Quebec City, while the Alanis carried the weight of wind turbine components destined for Duluth, Minnesota. These ships had places to be and cargo to deliver, but fate had a different plan. Photos posted by the brave firefighters of the Welland Union showcased the battle scars on each ship's hull, hopefully to provide some of us with a reminder of what to avoid at sea. Stuck before sailing No one ever said that launching a ship to set sail is an easy task, but it shouldn't be that hard, should it? Well, try telling that to the Ferris Smith shipyard in Leer, Germany, after they launched the Symphony Provider the second vessel in a series of two Exobox DP-2 vessels. As you might have guessed, the launch didn't go quite as planned. You can basically tell from the video footage that the bow of the vessel became stuck during the launch, while the stern slid down the slipway, eventually stopping the vessel about mid-launch. Upon closer inspection, it appeared that the hydraulic pins holding the bow malfunctioned, causing the unexpected delay. Fortunately, the issue was resolved manually, thanks to a crew that knew their know-how. When all was said and done, the newly released vessel was allowed to be launched successfully into the water like it was always intended to. Despite the malfunction, the Symphony provider was still expected for a prompt delivery. It's worth noting that launching a vessel is a complex process that requires careful planning and execution. Even with the best preparations, things can still go wrong as seen in this incident. The malfunction of the hydraulic pin highlights the importance of ensuring that all equipment is functioning correctly before proceeding with the launch. If you're not aware of everything that can and likely will go wrong, you might just be stuck without a paddle. Or like in our next topic, without a bridge. The Destroyed Bridge While this isn't the first case of a ship crashing into a bridge, you think it'd be easier to navigate around these things than to crash into them. A cargo ship, the MV Ems Moon, collided with a railway bridge in Germany, causing the bridge to close indefinitely. Hopefully, it wasn't getting too much use before the incident. According to reports, the 111-meter general cargo ship was sailing along the Ems River when it struck the bridge near Wiener, Germany at approximately 6.40 p.m. local time. The collision occurred after the bridge failed to rise for the vessel. So who should really be getting the blame here? On the bright side, the vessel has been removed for the area, according to the AIS data from marine traffic, so at least no one has to worry about that. The incident went under a heavy investigation, with the proper authorities working to determine the root cause of the collision. The closure of the railway bridge has unfortunately caused significant disruptions to transportation in the area, but efforts are being made to reopen the bridge as soon as possible. But if you want our advice, Maybe wait a bit longer before driving into a closed bridge. The crane goes down. In a stroke of bad luck, the feeder box ship Soul of Luck lived up to its name by slamming into a pier and taking down a gantry crane at Port in Indonesia. It's almost enough to make you think that fate has a cruel sense of humor. The incident occurred at the 1997-built 1597 TEU vessel that was arriving at the port from Malaysia's Port Klang. The Soul of Luck collided with the pier, 
causing the gantry crane to collapse before hitting another vessel at the terminal. That must have hurt. Thankfully, no one was majorly hurt and only minor injuries were sustained by a truck driver who was taken to the hospital. Investigations were quickly sent underway to figure out what the heck happened and determine the initial cause of the accident. Their focus was on none other than the tugboat KT Jandera 304 as the primary suspect. But this incident is just one of many recent crane-related accidents worldwide, leading to TT Club and Ensure urging port operators to install laser technology to prevent costly accidents. Not a bad idea, hopefully. According to the TT Club, Quay Crane issues continue to be the most significant source of costly incidents for ports and terminal operators. Incredibly, the TT Club has handled 325 cases of crane collisions in the previous 10 years. While the Soul of Lux collision was a stroke of bad luck, it's always a good idea to keep in mind the importance of safety measures in the maritime industry. Hopefully, this incident will encourage more operators to take necessary precautions to prevent similar accidents from happening in the future. Breaking Bridges While this isn't doing any stereotypes any favors, it does feel like a scene straight out of a movie. A Russian cargo ship with a drunk captain on board crashed into a motorway bridge in South Korea while cars were driving along it. Video footage captured the moment the 6,000-ton vessel Sea Grand collided with the side of the Gwangin Bridge in the port of Busan at around 4.20 local time. To make matters worse, the ship should have been heading in the opposite direction to the bridge and then turned around and sailed off the other way, according to the Korea Coast Guard, also called the KCG. The collision tore a gaping 5-meter-wide hole into the lower part of the bi-level bridge, but miraculously, there were no reported injuries. It was still probably pretty scary, though. After questioning the crew on board, the KCG discovered that the ship's Russian captain was allegedly over the legal alcohol limit for driving the vessel. While it's not exactly illegal to consume alcohol on board a ship, the captain is definitely one person who cannot steer it while over the mandatory limit. We have rules for a reason, you know. It's still unclear whether the captain was at the helm at the time of the crash or stumbling off somewhere else. The Sea Grant had arrived in South Korea's largest port where it unloaded 1,495 tons of iron pipes before getting back out for Russia with a load of steel coils. According to reports, the Sea Grant had also hit a cruise ship moored at the same port about 40 minutes before bumping into the bridge. Not exactly a great look. Look out for the dock. You don't have to look twice to see that something was wrong with this ship heading to the dock, mostly that it just didn't seem to stop. In a moment that could have been taken straight out of a cartoon, this massive container ship failed to weigh its anchor in time and crashed into a dock in Mumbai, India, taking out a chunk of the harbor. As the ship approached the dock, men could be heard shouting in panic as the vessel collided with the walkway. Despite leaving a hole in the side of the dock, no one was hurt and there was no major damage, not counting the misshapen concrete. The ship continued to move closer to the dock, making loud crushing and banging noises as it hit the harbor and caused panic for probably everyone in the area. Three men watched the inevitable accident and shouted to each other in the moments after the smash before deciding to go out and lend a hand. According to a senior inspector of Nava Shiva Police, the ship had been trying to make a turn when it hit a portion of the jetty. In pictures of the damage, it appears that the metal barrier on the side of the dock was pushed out of shape and multiple wires were pulled up. Reports indicate that the incident was caused by a failure in the ship's onboard computer system, which led to the vessel hitting the jetty instead of turning alongside it. If there's any lesson to be learned, it's probably that we shouldn't leave computers to safeguard our jobs. Shipping Down the Sea it seems that in the giant expanse of the open ocean, finding two ships to crash into each other is more common than you could imagine. These two massive container ships collided at one of South Asia's busiest ports, sending over 50 shipping containers plunging into the ocean. That's a lot of lost merch. The incident was captured on video by a local port worker and quickly gained traction on social media. The grinding and destruction occurred at Pakistan's Karachi port 
when an 8,000 container cargo ship collided with an anchored cargo ship carrying around 6,350 containers. As if that wasn't bad enough, the situation quickly escalated as shipping containers began tumbling into the water, reportedly causing millions of rupees worth of cargo to be lost. Port authorities claimed that 55 to 60 containers were lost in total. Two berths were also damaged in the accident, but thankfully no one was close enough to the damage to be hurt. The Karachi Port Trust has ordered an investigation into the crash, which resulted in the halting of container transport for several hours, but it just seems to have fizzled out since then. An operation to retrieve the containers from the sea is currently underway with the help of the Pakistan Navy, and it's estimated that it'll take a bit of time to complete. But still, we can't help but wonder what exactly was in those cargo bins. Yacht Overboard Imagine finally getting yourself that yacht you've always dreamed of. Well, it might just stay a dream for most of us, but at least we don't have to deal with watching our imaginary pleasure ship tipping over like this one. A $10 million 90-foot yacht named Baden capsized during its launch in Washington. The cause of the accident, like most of these other sea-written disasters, has been labeled as under investigation. But the builders of the boat, called New World Yacht Builders, under the Northern Marine brand, stated that the problem appeared to be with the launch apparatus rather than the boat itself. According to a press release, the dolly carrying the weight of the port stern of the yacht may have suddenly dropped off the edge of the boat ramp during the launch, causing the vessel to experience a sudden list to port, which is something that it could not recover from in light of its condition for launch. Apparently, cargo and crew are an important element to staying upright and afloat. A video from Yacht Vid shows someone breaking a champagne bottle on the hull before the boat slid into the water. Hopefully, they didn't get the blame. As the ship entered the water, the vessel started to lean to the port side and quickly capsized. Fortunately, all six people on board escaped without any serious injuries. Northern Marine, the company responsible for building the yacht, has launched over 35 vessels at the same ramp with no previous issues and the company has gone on record to say they have complete confidence in their designs. Bumping a bridge Well, it seems like the Olga M had a bit of mishap recently. This 74-meter-long cargo vessel managed to bump into the Halkilda Evripris Bridge in Greece. Oops! Thankfully, no significant damage was done to either the bridge or the vessel, and the Olga M was able to make its way to a nearby quay to dock. Phew, that was a close one. It kind of looks like when a new driver rear-ends a parked car, only to slowly slink back out with no real harm done. Not a great look, but at least no one was hurt. Luckily, there were no reports of any injuries or pollution released from the shakeup, so it seems like everything turned out okay. We can only imagine the captain's embarrassment at the incident. Perhaps they were just trying to get a closer look at the beautiful views of Greece and got a little too close for comfort. Or maybe they were just having an off day. We've all had those, right? Either way, it's a relief to know that the situation wasn't worse than it was. It always seems a bit nerve-wracking when a large vessel like the Olga M has a collision, but it's a testament to the strength of the bridge and the sturdiness of the ship that neither sustained significant damage. Either way, we hope that the Olga M has had a safe and uneventful journey from here on out. Mansion Mayhem Well, it seems like the crew of this cargo ship had a bit of a rough day recently, they managed to crash their massive vessel right into a historic mansion in Istanbul's Bosphorus Strait. Someone must have gotten strung out for that strange catastrophe. The whole thing was caught on video and it's pretty intense. You can see the ship hurtling towards the harbor just waiting for the inevitable while everyone inside the waterfront restaurant was scrambling to get out of the way. At first, it looks like the ship is going to plow straight into the restaurant, but it manages to narrowly miss it and hit the mansion next door instead. That's definitely a close call, but it's practically falling from the frying pan right into the fire. That historic building had been standing since the 18th century, and now it's finally fallen. Like most of these other crazy incidences, somehow almost everyone avoided being hurt in this one, which is pretty miraculous considering the size of the ship and the amount of damage it caused. Tow boats and coast guards arrived on the scene to assess the situation and water traffic in the area was suspended for a while. It's a shame to see such a historic and expensive property get destroyed like that 
we can only imagine the owner's reaction. When they heard the news, what do you mean a cargo ship crashed into my mansion? But sometimes accidents happen that we can't help, especially out in the wild and unforgiving sea. We hope that the crew of the cargo ship learn from their mistake and that they're able to navigate the waters more safely in the future. And as for the mansion, well, maybe they'll build another one, another damaged dock. It's important to remember that the docks aren't actually there to stop ships like a parking space for a car. Someone should make sure that the crew of the Cap San Antonio knows this next time they try to come in for a docking. While attempting to sail out to sea from Santos, Brazil, the Denmark-flagged vessel operated by German firm Hamburg SUD managed to crash into a pontoon used for loading passenger ferries. You can see the massive ship, which is supposedly as long as the Eiffel Tower is tall, smashing into the pontoon and ripping a hole in the side of the vessel. Meanwhile, dock workers were scrambling to get out of the way as the pontoon is ripped free, causing parts of the dock to sink and leaving debris floating on top of the water. The cause of the crash will need a thorough investigation, but it's clear that the ship sustained some damage and needed to be anchored at Santos for repairs. It's also interesting to note that the Cap San Antonio is one of 10 container ships built for Hamburg SUD and it's 1,090 feet long and 160 feet wide. That's huge. To put it in perspective, the MV Ever Given, the container ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal not too long ago, measured 1,300 feet long by 190 feet wide. Driving big things is probably a lot harder than it looks, but then again, they can cause a lot more damage than they're probably worth. Crane Collapse it looks like there was a pretty serious accident at the port of Vancouver that involved a giant crane. A ship-to-shore crane, to be specific, was on the dock until it collapsed onto a loaded container vessel, causing operations at one of the busy ports to shut down. According to a spokeswoman for Global Container Terminals Vanterm, the ship was identified as the 300-meter-long Ever Summit on a marine traffic website. It was coming in to berth early on Monday morning when it made contact with the crane and well, this was the result. While the ship doesn't appear to be damaged at a glance, footage from the scene shows the boom of the crane draped across the vessel and several crushed containers stacked at the ship's stern. You might be surprised, or you might not be at this point, but no one was actually injured in this incident. Maybe the captain's pride was. The most significant damage, of course, was given to the crane, which is unfortunate since it wasn't even doing anything at the time. Stairways and walkways at the top of the crane were torn from their mounts, and a large tubular arm is folded like an elbow. Two tugs were holding the ship against the dock to ensure that it didn't shift and cause further damage. Vessel operations have been shut down, and an exclusion zone has been set up to manage the scene until further notice. These isolated incidents do have a lot of repercussions, but the show must go on eventually. Crane Crashing Cargo You might have gotten into a fender bender on the road and realized what a hassle it was to deal with at the time, but let's just say that things are a bit different when it happens in the ocean. In this case, it looks like there was a similar kind of accident at the port of Kaohsiung in Taiwan recently. The 316-meter-long container ship Durban owned by OOCL Shipping Company, was attempting to dock when it sideswiped the Constancy belonging to Yang Ming Shipping. Unfortunately, the collision caused one of the container cranes to collapse onto GCS and it was a messy incident, to say the least. Workers had to run for their lives as the crane began to crumble to the ground, and as it collapsed, it hit a stack of containers, causing them to fall as well. In this scenario, only one worker was slightly injured in the accident. The 58-year-old man, named Zhang, was treated at Yang's General Hospital for a cut on his forearm and abrasions on one foot. While not especially lucky, it definitely could have been worse with that level of destruction. That port is one of the largest in Taiwan and the 15th largest in the world. Around three-quarters of Taiwan's containers throughout enter and exit via that port so this is definitely not the kind of fender bender you want to see. Let's hope that everyone involved in the incident is able to recover quickly and that the port is back up and running smoothly 
In the meantime, maybe it's time to invest in some extra large bumpers for those container ships. Strike on the sea. It's a big and open ocean out there. So big that you might think it's practically impossible for anyone to crash into each other. Obviously, that's been disproven plenty of times by now, but it doesn't get tiring to see, right? Well, we hope so because here's another incident as two colossal ships collide head-on in a catastrophic accident at sea. Talk about devastation to the worst degree. The intense impact, captured in this gripping footage, is nerve-wracking to anyone who knows the levels of destruction going on as the vessels, each weighing thousands of tons, converged. The aftermath of the collision was no doubt just as bad to deal with as rescue operations scramble to save anyone involved at the scene while salvaging the remains of the ships can't have those mechanical parts polluting the fresh waters after all. Otherwise, a whole slew of new problems could start forming. But at least one guy could tell that the damage was imminent. And while we're glad he did have a camera on hand to show the world what happened, it really is too bad that he didn't have the power to stop it. Collision with huge waves. You'll want to hold on to your seats for this one, or maybe just leave them behind like these people did. The storm Melania had caused mass disruption in parts of Germany, including this terrifying incident on a ferry traveling on the Elbe River in Hamburg. The video has been circulating on social media and shows waves crashing through the ferry's windows and pummeling passengers during a horrific storm. It's the kind of unexpected yet strangely obvious kind of incident that makes you wonder why people keep trying to relax on ships in the first place. The footage is nothing short of a horror movie with the bow of the ferry dipping down as it battles massive waves. The water comes above the windows with such force that a passenger sitting at the front appears to get swept off their seat. Other passengers are seen picking up their belongings as water rushes past their feet and a scream is heard as a passenger flees from the freezing water gushing across the floor. Thankfully, no one was seriously injured in the incident, but an investigation will reportedly be launched into why the safety glass broke. This storm has unleashed its fury over Germany. A national railway company has stopped long-distance train services in seven out of the country's 16 states. While it's always best to stay inside and secure during storms like these, sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do, even if it means taking a boat trip into stormy weather. But in the meantime, it might be best to stay on dry land until the storm passes. Breaking the Bank a cargo boat collision caused a vessel to crash into the Huangpu River Bank in China. Two boats collided with each other on the river, leading Jingru to veer towards the shore and crash into the river bank, damaging some of the rails placed there. Upon arrival at the scene, a Shanghai Daily Reporter noted that the area where the bank rails were damaged was sealed off, but the rest of the waterfront remained open. Many people could be seen taking photos near the scene and the administration soon dispatched two patrol vessels to the area. Fortunately, nobody on the boat or the riverside was hurt, and the ship was loaded with sand, with its front being damaged but its navigation ability unaffected. Jing Ru was escorted out to a suburban Minghang district, and the other boat, Run, later sailed to Yangpu district and was berthed there. The cause of the incident is still being investigated and the administration is working to ensure that similar incidents are prevented in the future. The incident highlights the importance of a prompt response and effective action to minimize damage and ensure the safety of all involved. But accidents happen and not everyone can prepare for the worst. But it's always a good idea to try to at least. Maybe install an emergency brake next time. Unloading to sink. Just when you think you're done, they pull you right back in. Or if you're a cargo ship in the ocean, they'll pull you down. This particular ship, named Sea Eagle, capsized in Turkey, sending containers tumbling into the sea. A video of the incident showed the ship keeling over while a port lift truck was unloading the containers. The people nearby quickly moved away after hearing a whistling sound, and the ship quickly submerged in water, leaving the crew members and people offloading the cargo shocked. Thankfully, all crew members were evacuated safely and no injuries were reported. The ship was suffering from stability issues and efforts to balance it did not yield results. According to reports, the government is investigating the cause of the accident. But in the meantime, efforts are underway to offload the ship's fuel and retrieve the containers. While it's certainly not a laughing matter, 
We can't help but imagine the containers taking a dip in the sea and enjoying a little vacation before being retrieved. It's definitely a more positive way to look at the scene. Let's just hope that the operation to retrieve them goes swimmingly and that the ship is righted soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs>